Welcome back once more to the Ram Report as we continue our conversation with Rams head coach Steve Fairchild and uh, wrapping up Legends Week last week, a chance to bring in some of those true Ram legends, uh, Steve Bartolo amongst them. But uh, give me your sense and your thought of Legends Week and honoring some of those great Ram teams. Well, we've had so many good football teams and good football players that have you know walked these halls and played out at, at Hughes. And anytime you can honor those guys, I think it's great to bring them back. It, it allows our kids to kind of learn about the history of CSU football, allows them to get back and see nice facilities and things we're doing. So like you said, we had a chance to visit with Steve. He was in our indoor walkthrough here Friday. So uh, it's neat. It's a good idea and I'm glad we're doing it. Well, let's take a closer look as Legends Week got underway last weekend in the Rams matchup with San Diego State. Steve Bartolo amongst those taking part in the festivities. Running back, number 27. <laughs> it was Legends Day this past weekend at Hughes Stadium prior to the Rams matchup with the Aztecs. Former Ram greats made their way out to tailgate with former coaches and teammates. The history of this football program is rich, and the conversation around the tailgate was full of great memories dating back to the 60s. Perhaps the biggest name to visit Fort Collins over the weekend was CSU's all-time leading rusher, Steve Bartello. Bartello played for the Rams in the 80s, but hasn't been back to visit his alma mater in 15 years. Needless to say, the campus has had quite the transformation since he last left it. It's an exciting time for me just to be back here and to see how much the school has grown, how much the program's grown, the facilities are unbelievable. The weight room, the indoor practice field, the stadium here, uh, it's incredible the, the amount of support that we have now and it's, we can only build on it and keep getting better. Bartolo walked on to the CSU squad in 1982 as a scout team quarterback. Listed at 5 feet 9 inches tall and 200 pounds, Bartolo became the first and only player in school history to lead the team in rushing in four consecutive seasons. Bartolo was a three-time all-conference selection and the conference's Offensive Player of the Year in 1986. However, he gives almost all the credit to the people around him at the time. So it was a single back offense. We had two tight ends. We had Kelly McGregor and Harper LaBelle that were tight ends for us. And so there wasn't a lot of deception. I was either carrying the football or we were throwing it. So it, it was a tough offense to play. We knew, the other team knew who was going to have the ball if it wasn't a pass play. So it was a lot of fun. I got to carry the ball a lot and gain some yardage. But I had, I had a great offensive line all four years, and it was, it, was, it was easy for me to pick up some yardage and score points. He concluded his career with 4,813 yards and set an NCAA mark with 1,210 career carries. In his career, he gained more than 100 yards in a game 28 times, another school record. He was a six-round selection by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 1987 and was inducted into the CSU Sports Hall of Fame in 1995. Coming as a walk-on here, I never imagined that I would play as well as I did or as long as I did. And um, to have the record and for it to still hold today is... Uh, it's something as you get older, you think back and you, you feel pretty proud about it. Despite all his personal accomplishments, it was the first game of his senior season in 1986 that he remembers most. My senior year when we played CU, first game of the season up in Boulder, and they were 16th in the country. We were 16-point underdogs, and we went in there and, and beat them soundly in, in Boulder. To beat them for the first time in I don't know how many years since we first started playing them, I mean, it was, that was an incredible experience for us. It was one, of, one, one I'll never forget. For the Ram Report, Andy Morgan. Well, great to see so many uh, Ram fans and uh, those Ram fans being also legends. And, and I guess that's where I wanted to, to go with this is it's amazing how impactful CSU is in the lives of uh, former players and you really get a sense of that when they come back to campus like Steve Bartello had a chance to be a practice this week and uh, it's always fun to see that CSU is still close to the hearts of so many former Ram legends. Yeah I, I think anybody that's that's lived in Fort Collins or gone to school here and particularly played football or been in the athletic department really knows it's a special place and gets in you and it's hard hard to let go and yeah it was good to have Steve back and you know we saw him over at the hotel and I remember him when he played I was coaching against him and he was a tremendous player so uh, yeah it was good to see all those guys back in town. What does that do for the players though when you see someone who accomplished so much in their time playing in that same stadium 
putting on the green and gold, and now all of a sudden you see where they are in their life and, and what they've accomplished. What does that do for a, an 18, 19, 20-year-old kid? Well, I, I think they, they identify with those people. And, you know, we've had Ray Jackson come back and speak to the team. And I think any time they can see those players that sat where they were sitting and then hear from them, it's, it's a good thing to do. Well, Coach, saw some great things last week. I know a tough loss, but again, a lot of steps forward there last Saturday and a chance to put it all together against a very good TCU team coming up this Saturday. Best of luck. Thank you very much. All right, that is a Rams head football coach, Steve Fairchild. When we come back, we talk volleyball with the Mountain West Conference Tournament kicking off this weekend. We'll talk with Tom Hilbert, the head coach, after this on the Ram Report. Solving real-world problems is a hallmark of research at Colorado State University. CSU's Animal Cancer Center customizes university research to fit the real world, translating groundbreaking animal cancer treatments into new therapies for human cancers. From animals to humans, the Cancer Center brings innovation and hope to cancer patients. Colorado State University Research. Local discovery, global impact. Yeah, I like to have fun with Twitter. And a lot of people ask me, how do you come up with those humorous tweets? Guys, you're better than this. Let's go. I need something tonight. Bean burrito? Bean burrito does not get it done. Jesse, 140 characters. 140. <sighs> Only a Wyoming fan would like that. That's right. Doreen, you're starting tonight, baby. Yeah, it's nothing. It just comes to me. Hi, and welcome back to the Ram Report. I'm Kevin McClue. Right now, joined in our final segment of the broadcast by CSU volleyball coach Tom Hilbert and redshirt freshman Kelsey Snyder joining us. And uh, thanks so much for being here. And Kelsey, let me start with you. What's this been like for you now, your first year of, of real action? You've started about a third of the matches here this year. How's it been getting into the flow? I know last year you got a chance to kind of get your feet under you, but this year it's been live bullets. How's it been? It's been good. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I've learned a lot. Uh, it's good to get back to the swing of things and really get like the game part of it down instead of just like being on the scout team and learning all that. And Tom, your thoughts as you bring in obviously a very talented player, a very talented local player. Uh, your thoughts on Kelsey's performance this year? That's obviously a big accolade to play and start in almost a third of the matches as a redshirt freshman. It is. And we, you know, I I do think Kelsey's done a great job this year. I think. She is physically as good or better than anybody in our conference. And she has just tremendous quick twitch muscles. She's up and down fast. She's, she's exactly what you want a volleyball player to be. And so what we're working on with Kelsey is her just seeing things a little bit better. And as, she, as her vision begins to improve, she makes more plays. And we see her doing more things. And so um, I really think she's she's going to be a major force in this conference when it's all said and done. And Kelsey, you grew up as an in-state student, and I know that when you look at the volleyball programs, uh, Colorado State right at the top of the list of those teams that are in there, year in, year, in, year out perennially is a team that's always in competition for not only the conference title, but to be in the mix in the NCAA tournament. Uh, what was it that brought you uh, ultimately to Colorado State? Well, I wanted to go to a top 20 team, and so knowing that they were in the top 20 like most of the time that was a huge factor the fact that they were in state so that I could still like have my family come to the matches and be here to support me that was a huge influence. And Tom you get into a portion where obviously uh, Kelsey and the rest of this team are really going to face a, a stiff test this weekend it's the NCAA uh, primer if you will because I know that's the ultimate goal for you it's right. the conference tournament the Mountain West Conference Tournament down in Albuquerque mm -hmm. uh, you start out with Air Force a team that you blanked uh, in three straight both times you met the uh, the Falcons your thoughts on that first match against Air Force well you know Air Force will come out playing hard those kids uh, the cadets on that team are just like they are in all the other teams. They're disciplined kids that work very hard. They don't get the cream of the crop in terms of, of volleyball talent always, but they always have kids that play hard and play to win, and uh, they will give us a good match. Kelsey, when you look at the balance of this season, and obviously had so much success there in the conference portion of this schedule, but when you look now towards uh, this tournament, 
How do you try not to take anything for granted, knowing that you beat most of these teams and you beat most of them more than once? How do you, you try to not let that affect you too much? You want to be confident, but you don't want to be overconfident. Yeah, you just got to like go in and know that since we have beat them in the past, that they're going to come in like harder and want to beat us even more just since we have won the conference already last year and the year before that. So they want to stop us from doing that. And just knowing that they're going to come in fighting is good. Yeah, and, and Tom, it's not the only way to punch your ticket to the NCAA tournament, but mm -hmm. it might be uh, the easiest way if you can just go ahead and win the Mountain West Conference tournament. But yeah. uh, uh, your thoughts on that whole process and kind of give fans some insight as to uh, how you can get into the NCAA tournament outside of just winning this tournament itself. Well, the, it is the what they call the AQ, the automatic qualifier, is to win the tournament. So whoever wins this tournament will be in the NCAA tournament. Then they also select about 30 or so at-large choices and they usually do that by looking at your RPI and how you've done against teams in the top 25, top 50, top 75. And they look at good wins as well as bad losses. And so, you know, we're I think we're kind of on the bubble but probably pretty safe in terms of get, being an at-large team this year, but you never really know because you don't know what's going to happen in the last two weekends of the season with other people. You know, there may be somebody come in and get some big upsets. So, so we need to, we feel like we need to go out and win games and make a statement. We need to be a 20, 23 game or 23 set or match winner and uh, be in the top 30 in RPI. And, and we can only do that if we go out and win our tournament and beat New Mexico State uh, on the 26th. Kelsey, one last question for you. Uh, what is the mindset right now with this team? And, and now it's a very real possibility that uh, you have a chance to win a conference tournament. You have a chance to get into the NCAA tournament. What's the feel right now in the locker room? Um, basically, just go out there, work hard, get it done. Uh, focus on the things that are just our little weaknesses just to make those better so that we don't have as many gaps. And then just play our game. All right, Kelsey, Tom, thanks so much for joining us. Best of luck coming up. Big weekend here for Ram Volleyball. All right, that is Kelsey Snyder and Tom Hilbert, the head coach of the CSU volleyball team. That'll do it. I invite you to join us next week right here on the Ram Report. Thanks for joining us on the Ram Report with Steve Fairchild. Join us again next time for more Ram action.